Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem number of good pairs. Even though this is an easy one, there are a couple things that you can learn from it. We're given an integer array of nums and we want to return the number of good pairs. In this case, a good pair is a pair of values that are equal. So in this case, one and one, where the index of one of the values is less than the index of the other. And technically that's always going to be the case, right? Cause like no pair of values is gonna have the exact same index, but the pair is defined by the indices of the two values. The reason that's important here is because we can't count this pair twice. In other words, we can't swap the order of the indices and then count that same pair again. So basically it just means we can't double count anything, which is, in my opinion, pretty straightforward. It makes the problem straightforward. What do you think is the easiest solution to count every pair? Well, it's probably to look at every pair, right? Just read every single pair. How do you do that? Well, that is gonna be done with nested for loops or just nested loops in general. We have an array, don't we? So we can have a pointer, let's call it the I pointer, and we can have a J pointer. And we can look at every single pair of values. So starting with I here, let's look at every value where J is gonna be here, 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 here. And we're gonna count the number of pairs where the value is equal. So in this case, that will be here and here. So two pairs starting with I over here. And then we have our I pointer here and we kind of do the same thing. J is here and then we scan through there. Then we move I here, scan through there, et cetera, et cetera. And the overall time complexity of that is going to be roughly N squared. It's not a bad solution. I think it actually passes on leak code. But can we do better? And the answer is yes, we can. We can do a little bit of math. Do you think there's a pattern here? Like for example, we have three ones in this array. It doesn't really matter where they occur, does it? It doesn't matter where the positions of these are. They could be adjacent to each other. They could be split up across like the entire array. It doesn't matter. We have three ones. How many good pairs do you think we can make with three ones? Well, we could choose any of these three as the first value. Like here, this could be the first one. And then for the other two, we'd have two choices. So that's two. And also we could consider this as the first one and then we would have one choice. So that's two plus one. Lastly, we could also choose this one, but then we'd have no other ones to the right of it. So in total, we'd get three good pairs with three values. Now, let me ask you, is there a math formula that you might know that would tell us, like given an arbitrary number of values, whether it's two or like three, or maybe we have four ones, is there a math equation you might know that would tell you the number of good pairs? Well, I'll show you how to derive one very quickly, just using a little bit of statistics. We are looking to fill two slots because we're looking to form a pair. For the first slot, we could pick any of these four values. That gives us four choices for the first slot. What about the second slot? Well, whether we pick this one or we pick this one or the other one or the other one, we'd have three choices remaining. So of course we'd have three choices for the second slot, but this is a little bit misleading because we might get duplicates because what we actually did here is this is sort of permutations. If I chose this one in the first slot, we actually don't have three choices because I don't want to end up picking one of these for the other slot because that's not allowed in the first place, remember. So in other words, doing it this way, we're gonna get every pair. We're gonna get this one in the first spot and then this one in the second spot. But we're also gonna get this one in the first spot and then this one in the second spot. We're gonna double count every single pair. We're gonna have each pair twice where the order is flipped. So you tell me, you tell me, with this formula, if we're double counting it, how can we take this formula and fix it so that we don't double count? Probably the easiest way is just divide this whole thing by two, right? And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So assume we count four ones in the input. How many pairs is that gonna be? It's gonna be four times three divided by two. Or in other words, if N is the count, or let's say C is the count, 
of that number, the formula is going to be C times C minus 1 divided by 2. That's how many good pairs we can get with this many 1s. So now the solution becomes, using a hash map, count the number of occurrences for every single number. And then just apply that math formula, C times C minus 1 divided by 2, for the count of every single number. Now, what if the count is 1? Like, the count of 2 clearly is 1. So what's this math formula going to do? It's going to be 1 times 1 minus 1 divided by 2. And this is going to be a 0. This is going to be a 0 here. So it's going to make this whole thing a 0. So in our code, we don't even need an if statement to check that the count is greater than 1. Because even if the count is 1, the math still works out. So let me quickly code up this solution. So what I'm going to do here is actually... Uh, use a built-in type in Python. It's called a counter. So I'm going to pass in nums. What this is basically going to do is create a hash map, count the occurrences of every single number. So every number is going to be mapped to the count. Now, of course, we could have done that ourselves with a hash map and then just iterated over this thing. You can do that if you want, but I'm assuming you already know how to do that. So now I'm going to get into the rest of the of math where we're iterating over uh, every item in uh, count.items. That's going to give us the number as well as the count that it maps to. And we don't care about the number, actually. Uh, we care about the count. We know the math formula is C times C minus 1. Divide that whole thing by 2. And what we're going to do is add this to our result, which is initially going to be 0. So take this, add it to this guy, and then down here, return the result. That's the whole code. O of n time, because we're iterating over the list of items uh, when we build the counter, and then we're also uh, iterating over the hash map. And we have extra memory, of course, with the hash map. So that's also going to be big O of n memory complexity. Let's run this to make sure that it works. And on the left, you can see it does. But there's one more solution I want to show you because it's actually helpful in problems where sometimes you can't figure out the math formula. If you're not a big fan of math, you might like this solution more. It's also just as efficient, both in terms of memory and runtime. So we are going to still keep track of the count for every single number. We're going to have its count. And as we do that, we're going to count the number of pairs basically as we iterate over the input. We're not going to do it afterwards. Let me show you how we're going to do that. So, so far, we have a single one. And then we get to a two. Now we have a single two. Of course, we can't form pairs with a single number. We need multiple of the same number. And then we get a three. Not bad, but still we can't form a pair with any of these. And then we get a second one. So I'm not really showing how we're keeping track of all of this, but you can assume we are. Now we get to the point where n has a count of two. But before it had a count of two, it had a count of one. So my argument here is that when we found a second one, what we should do is check, is there already a one in the hash map? Yes, there is. So now we are able to form one pair because we can take this one and the other one that we already had, and this forms one pair. So the number that we had stored here is relevant. We had a one, so this one is what we would add to our result. But now uh, that we're done with that, we now update the count to two. And now when we have a third one over here, we're going to look into our hash map. We already found two previous ones here and here. So with the introduction of this one, you tell me how many additional pairs can we form? Looks like to me one and two, right? So in other words, the same as the count of one that we already had stored, which was two. So now if our result was one, we also add two to it. So now it's equal to three. And if we had a fourth one over here, we would say our, our count at this point, like with these three ones would have been three. And we'd say with the introduction of this one, we can now form one, two, three new pairs, basically the number of ones we already had, because with the introduction of this, we now form those pairs. 
So that's the idea behind this solution. I hope it makes sense. Now let's code it up. So this time we are going to declare our result and this time we're actually going to iterate over the hash map and keep uh, or iterate over the array and then uh, keep track of the counts ourselves with this hash map. We're still mapping the number to the count. So now let's go through for n in nums. We don't really care about the index. And then we're going to check is n already in count because if it is then we can add to our result the count that we already had stored there and then after that this is very important that you do this after increment the count by one because we want the original count that tells us how many new pairs we can now form and if that wasn't the case in the else block we want to just initialize the count and we should probably initialize it with one because this is the first time we've seen this value before. And after we're done with that, all we have to do is return the result. I know this solution looks like magic, but we talked about why it's not actually magic. And this pattern actually does show up sometimes. So I think it's definitely worth learning, even though this is an easy problem. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient, even though the runtime, of course, varies on leak code. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.